Hello, this is Ana Imagination, and we are going to talk about something that is not talked about anywhere ever. Power. Power is the missing component and the core component of economics, human connection, propagation. It's the core of everything. We're going to go ahead and pull out the whiteboard and I'm going to explain this to you. Whenever you have a subject, there are two layers of the subject. There are all the components of the subject. The components of any given subject, there are a lot. Pick any subject and it has many components. Now, the components of any given subject are scattered all over the place. It's a mess. I mean, it's pretty bad. So people who are uneducated and teachers, because they are uneducated, have components scattered all over the place. And they go in and they try and teach all these different components. As a result, this takes anywhere from two, four, six, eight years to accomplish. However, there is a second thing happening here that most people don't know. Philosophers have figured this out, which is why they are philosophers. There is another subject called the integrated whole of a subject or the greater whole of the subject. Now, the greater whole of the subject is consisting of literally all of these things, but this massive thing is actually just this. So this greater whole of the subject is equal to all of the combined integrated components plus synergy, which means a sum is greater than its parts because when you put them together, they work more efficiently. So this, when you look at the integrated whole, takes approximately anywhere from two months to, I would say, two years max to study. Now, every subject has the greater whole of the subject. And if you don't know the greater whole of the subject, then you're going to have to go through each and every one of the components of the subject to communicate what the subject is about. So you're going to have to spend two years on each and every one of these components. It's tedious. Or you can just study this one giant synergy and you're done. I figured this formula out when I was about 15 years old, and then I studied it in everything, which is why I can get through a subject like that. So in economics, if you were to study economics, it's scattered all over the place. And there's finance and there's all these pieces. Power. It's just power. So I'm going to break it down to you and I'm going to show you how this works. Whenever you have power, people don't understand what it is. First of all, power is energy. Literally, and you see this a lot in physics, a power source, an energy source. Power is synonymous with energy. But let's use it for the sake of power. And power comes down to equal footing. Bottom line, there's equal footing. And either you have equal footing or you don't. In order to determine if you have equal footing, you have to measure the power. But this now enters into the question of where does power come from and what is it? Well, a lot of people don't know this. In fact, no one knows this. So in economics, we have devised ways to measure the power without realizing we are measuring the power. So we've translated this and we've broken it down into some of the components. Some of the components are measure power like this. What gives 
a person power? That is the ultimate question. So a lot of people who are ignorant decide to make up shit. And they say, gender, that gives people power. And money, yeah, possessions, that gives people power. Uh, someone will say, knowledge, skills, skills, this gives people power. Yeah, you'll, you'll rattle off a whole lot of shit, right? No, that's not right. Not at all. When I studied psychology, I noticed something that was occurring between abuser and victim. You have your abuser versus your victim. And this is where the victim will sit there and scream about what they did to me. And the ultimate response to that is, well, why did you let them? I didn't let them. They did it. When you value something, what you are really doing is giving power to them. So the question ultimately is, what do you want from your abuser? Because you want something from them. You always want something from your abuser. You want their happiness, their approval, your safety. Their love, their acceptance, their resources, and which is just power. And the difference between someone who's healed and someone who's not is the healed person has figured this out. And they realized that they, the victim, gave power to their abuser. Thus, it was their choice. The victim is ignorant and blind to this truth, that your abuser hurt you because you valued something from your abuser. This gave them the upper hand because you surrendered your power. When you decided to enter into a transaction with your abuser, you decided to do business with an abuser. Your business between you and your abuser was you wanted something. The question is, what did you want? You wanted happiness. Did you want approval, safety, love? If you were a child, you wanted safety. You wanted safety. So they said to you, if you tell anyone, then I will X you. So you don't tell anyone because you want safety from them. You want safety from them. The problem is, and this is this is the real mind fuck, is you trust that they will deliver. Here's the other mind fuck. Is you think you actually have what they promised you. So when they promise you safety and then hurt you, you still think you've got safety. So now it's it's a, and this is the difference between a person who's being abused, beaten, raped, and they fight back versus somebody who doesn't. The person who fights back doesn't buy into the delusion. They realize you can't guarantee me my safety. That's the difference. If you give your abuser the power of and trusting you with your safety and trusting them with your safety, you've given them power. It is the victim who fights, who doesn't give the abuser this thing. The victim who fights is not a victim because they know the abuser won't do honorable business. So the victim who fights is actually not a victim at all. And when you heal, you become a victim who fights. You realize, oh, I made a bad business transaction with an asshole. I expected him to give me happiness, approval, safety, love, acceptance, and resources, but I didn't. He didn't deliver because I trusted the wrong person to do business with. 
all abuse can be broken down into this concept, all of it. Once you realize that you have the power through what you value, different game. So now let's go back over into this. When you are looking at equal footing, it's all about who has the most power and where power comes from. Power comes from choice of what to value. That is 100% where all power comes from. Your choice of what to value. The more you choose to value something, the more power it has. The more you collect it, then you collect, you choose to collect what you value, which gives it power. I value education. As a result, I can pursue education and fill my assets. This is really where it gets to be fun. Let's take a look over at basic economy. You have your assets. This is really the only box you ever need to concern yourself with. Assets. Your assets are your power. Now, your power is going to put cash into your pocket. It's your power. Education is absolutely going to put cash into your pocket. I need to clarify valuable. Now, let's say useful. Useful education. A lot of people do not know the difference. Useful education. Degrees are not useful education. Skills. Anything that can literally put cash into your pocket gives you power because cash represents a metric of power. Money is a metric of power, but it's just one of them. It's just one of them. It can be cashed in. So if you have your brain, basically, your brain is 100% problem solving, your skills in problem solving, because that can be transferred over into something you can sell, something you can transfer over into something. That's exactly all that you do. 100% of everything is literally what problems are you solving for other people. They are pursuing then solutions to their problems. And if you are selling solution to your problems, you're set. So it's literally problem solving skills or solutions. And there you go. So the more information you have, the more assets you have, the more it contributes to problem solving, the more you can convert it over. It is just power. Bottom line, all of these things are just power. Power is what you are actually trading. So that when you are ready to convert it over to money, and that's exactly what you're doing, because the first rule of energy is it cannot be created or destroyed. Energy can only be transferred or stored, which means you have power in you. The more you educate your mind, the greater your mind becomes powerful. The more education proper education. There's bad education and then there's good education. If you fill your head with useless shit, then you're going to have useless shit. It's quality. You have to have quality knowledge that's going to be converted over to power. Things that are useful. The things that are useful, financial knowledge, problem solving, communications. Mental and emotional management. There you go. Those are really the only four subjects you need. The only four. 
once you have these four, you are solid and you can literally put together anything. These are the instructions for how to build anything. Literally, these are the instructions for how to build anything. All other knowledge is secondary and or useless. These are literally the solutions to build anything. Now you put those in your brain and your brain is a huge fucking asset. Now you can create classes, you can create courses, you can create business, you can create literally anything. These are the power of creation. That's what that is. Did I mention the word power? So when you are now sitting down and you are looking at opening a transaction, you have equal footing. Now, we have all this bullshit in our society that tells us that if you want X and how powerful you are, so it measures all this bullshit. It measures bullshit like your race, your background, your gender, bullshit. And as a result, there's people who are really powerful going, oh, I'm not powerful because other people, and you're giving them power. So we are literally throwing away our power left and right. We are literally ignoring and denying what power we actually have. The real power is seeing and recognizing your power. The real power is assigning value to power to make it equal power. It's extraordinary. And a lot of people cannot do this because it's all a mindset. It's just a mindset. The mindset is the ultimate power. You control the mind and you can control anything. Control the mind and you control all. But you have to be able to discipline your mind, which is why I said these particular strategies, these right here is the power of creation because they control the mind. So now you're looking at your equal footing. You're looking for assigned value to power. You're looking to gain power. What are your resources? Resources are power. Resources are power. So it's what are your resources? What are your assets? Those are power. What can your mind do? That is power. And that is it bottom line. It is 100% a power that puts money in your pocket. That can be that can literally be converted into anything. And this is what people don't understand is when you have an economy, they're not seeing anything except money. And that is the problem. So what ends up happening is because you can't recognize money, because you can't, I'm sorry, because you can't recognize power for what it really is, a lot of people are not seeing it actually where it needs to be. So we're gonna do this. So you have your system, which is a closed system. You are a closed network. And you are wanting to do business with this network. Now, a network is a self. This is literally you. It's a self. And this is literally equivalent to a petty kingdom, a kingdom. So you have a kingdom over here. And you have another kingdom over there, a neighboring kingdom. You want to open trade with this kingdom. Bottom line, that is the whole goal is you want to do trade with this other kingdom. How are you going to do it? What you need to do is start literally a connection flow. You need to connect. So in order to connect, you have to literally give power via a peace offering. When you give power via a peace offering, you are showing that I come in peace and I mean no harm. So right there, you've built and established trust. What is trust? Are you ready for this? Trust is a person's care and preservation of your power. So if you give them power, what are they going to do with it? In the case of a peace offering, you give them a peace offering. If they shit on your power or they abuse you with it, you now have an idea of whether or not you can trust their power or trust them with your power. When you trust someone, you are literally assessing whether or not 
they will handle your power with care. Because once you start entering into a system and in an open network with them, you're talking about a power exchange. Now you're going to be transferring your resources over to these people. And when you transfer resources over to these people, what you are really doing is trading power. Now, if they have power, then they have the ability to manipulate you, abuse you with that power. For instance, how many times have you done a business transaction where you give someone your power and then they take it and they run with it? Now, because you've given them your power without proper trust to determine what they'll do with that power, you are now at a significant disadvantage. So they kick you in the shins and they run away with your power. Now you have less power and you're at a deficit of power because you don't have the ability to get it back you don't have the ability to compensate for that loss, which is why you should not engage in a power exchange with somebody unless and until you can trust them with your power. Your power is determined by where you put your value. So every time you choose to value, you are exchanging or placing power. You are giving power. Now, you have this ability to build up all of this power. And this is what a lot of people don't know is your resources, your ability to build up power. All of that adds up. So you have power X, an undefined amount of power. Now, the problem is if you don't know how to actually calculate your power, how do you know what you're worth? Same thing over here. You have somebody else who they have also power over here, which is X. They have no idea what their power is worth. So now you're entering into negotiations and you don't know what your power is worth. So some people will go, well, I'm a woman. Others will go, well, I, I, I have money. I have, let's say I have $10,000. There you go. Other people will go, well, I'm, I'm Latino. These are not values of power. And this is where we get really fucked up. We have values of power. And there's a lot of bullshit about what values of power are. These are not it. Those are not values of power. Values of power is what can you create? That is your power. What can you build? What can you think up? What can you build? There you go. That is your power. What can you create? That is your power. That's really all we're asking here. What can you create? But there's all this bullshit about scarcity and resources and cash flow and money and things that give you power that really don't. And it's none of it. It's a lot of baby boomer bullshit. It's garbage. It's all a bunch of people trying to talk about economics that they know nothing about. This isn't economics, people. This is psychology first. And if you don't know the psychology game, you don't know a goddamn thing about economy. Guess what? No one has a fucking clue about psychology. Not even the proclaimed professional psychologists. Look at the mental health crisis. They don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. As a result, the economy is in the toilet. Everything's in the toilet right now because no one has a fucking clue what psychology really is. It is the values of power. It is the comprehension of what power really is, what you are doing with it, and where you are putting it. Where are you assigning value to give power to? So you have power inside of you. It's called choice. In fact, I refer to it as the power of choice. When I say the power of choice, I mean it is all of the choice. There, there is no other power. Choice is power. Freedom is power, people. Freedom is power. Freedom is power. Say it with me. Freedom is power. Because when you are free, you can choose. Take it from a former slave. I fucking know. 
So power of choice. Choice is power. Freedom is power. Free equals choose. Now you have power. You can choose where and who is going to get your power by deciding what to value. You value an abuser? Well, they have power over you. You value money? Well, now it has power over you. You value an abusive husband? Well, now he has power over you. You value the opinion of your narcissistic bitch of a mother? Well, now she's got power over you. Choose where to put your power. The moment a person and a victim decides to stop valuing an abuser, boom, Stockholm Syndrome ends on the spot. That is the cure to Stockholm Syndrome. It's when you decide to stop valuing the abuser. Suddenly you got all the power. It's when you decide to value yourself and your choice above all else. Boom, you have power. Now, there is a craft and an art to how to use and wield your power. First, you need to put people through a circle of trust to determine if they are going to be honorable with your power. And that's really what you're looking for is, are they honorable with the gift of power? That's the ultimate question here. Are they honorable with the gift of power? Now, if you're uneducated, you're gonna be handing out your gift of power left and right. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. You need to test each and every person to determine, is this person going to be honorable with the gift of power that I give them? Because as soon as they have it, I'm fucked. Because that's how you control me. Literally. That's why we have peace offerings. Because I'm gifting you with some power, but a little bit, just to see what you do with it. So I can determine if I want to increase more, give you more power. Because once you connect with somebody, once you enter into a network with someone, now you are symbiotic in power. That's what a relationship is. It's symbiotic in power. The problem is a symbiotic in power relationship, symbiotic power, and that is a relationship. The problem is it only works under one situation. And I do mean only one. It's called equal footing. If you are not on equal footing, then you are not going to have a symbiotic power relationship. You will not have a symbiotic exchange. You will have a parasitic exchange. We call that codependent. Parasitic exchange. What exists in psychology also exists in economy. They are identical. So if you have a parasitic exchange, then you're going to have a parasitic economy. If it exists in psychology, it can exist in economy. Narcissism is a economic system. You can have, we have a narcissistic economy. We have a codependent economy. If you want to know about economy, you're going to have to study psychology. If you want to know about psychology, you're going to have to study economy. They are symbiotic. They are literally synonymous with each other. It's fucking extraordinary. So you have symbiotic power in your relationship. You want equal footing. Now, it doesn't matter if you are lover A and lover B. It does not matter if you are the United States or China. It doesn't matter. You are still going to require a symbi symbiotic power relationship. You are still going to require equal footing. If you don't have equal footing, it's going to fall to a parasitic exchange. It's going to become a narcissistic relationship. You have a relationship with your government. If your government has built the whole thing up like a narcissist, you're going to have a narcissistic relationship with your government that's codependent and symbiotic. Just saying. So once you get your symbiotic relationship built up and you are now properly connecting, 
and now you have equal footing and you have the flow, I'm going to say it a million times over. Mother nature needs equilibrium. Because everything is balanced in energy. And she becomes a bitch when it's not. This is like physics 101. And if you need an example, the atom bomb. You want to know what the atom bomb is? The atom bomb, the atomic bomb is, ready for it, unequal energy. That's all it is. Did I mention Mother Nature wants her fucking equilibrium? It has to have equal footing or the thing will fall apart because Mother Nature is a real bitch when it comes to things being equal. Now, people, for God knows what fucking reason, thinks they are an exception to this rule. And as a result, they don't feel they should live applying the laws of physics, which is why we have mental illness. If you really want to make sure things are balanced, then add a third party in here because triangles really add an uber awesome balance. It really makes things balanced, which is why an atom has three parts, people. So when you have equal footing and you start building the symbiotic power relationship, the third person involved here is who I like to refer to as Mother Nature. Because, you know, she is the one in charge of all of this. So Mother Nature runs off of a force. And that force, it's called balanced energy. Everyone ignores this one. Everyone ignores this one. You ignore this one and you're fucked. Bottom line, which is why our economy is fucked and it's why our mental health is fucked. It's why everything is fucked right now. is because everyone is ignoring this third component. Mother nature requires, she's the neutron. That's what she is. She is the neutron. She is the neutron of this whole shindig. And everyone keeps forgetting the neutron. What is the purpose of a neutron, people? Did we go to chemistry class? What is the purpose of a neutron? The purpose of a neutron is to balance the proton. Did I get these names right? I have to check. And the electron. I love physics. So... When you enter into an exchange, it has to be on equal footing. If it is not, you cannot fuck around with power on unequal footing. The minute you start exchanging and trading power on unequal footing, you lose absolutely your balance. And what ends up happening is you end up in a parasitic relationship that is unbalanced. So when you are wanting to accomplish economy, when you're wanting to get rich, when you're wanting to enter into a relationship, it really doesn't matter what you're doing. It must have equal footing. And it is all about who has the same amount of power, not equal amount, or I'm sorry, not more power, equal amount. Because what you are really doing is not gaining more power, but you are exchanging. I need a word. I need a word. You are exchanging, oh, I do need a word. Oh, 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 I need a word. I don't even know if this word exists. Interesting. Containers. All you are doing is trading containers of power. The power is really what you are trading. The power is really what you are trading. But the power is nothing if it's not inside a container. So you have power inside container A and you have power inside container B. What you are wanting to really do is transfer. Remember what I said about energy? It can only be transferred or stored. You want to transfer power energy from container A to container B. That's all you are doing. I'll say it again. Study physics and chemistry. Study physics. So let's say for a minute that this person over here wants to trade to exchange this container for a different container. 
So in order to do this, you need to make sure that your containers are transferable. But people think, oh, I just want money. No, no, money is just a container. Money is a container. You're confusing money for power. And as a result, people can only see the money. But they forget that money is a container of power. You are really trading for power. And once you realize this, Suddenly, you're no longer looking at money. You're looking at all the containers. Now, I have a shit ton of power, which means I just need to convert my power over into a different source. You're just switching containers. So let's say that this is one container. And this container could be, let's say it's a couch. And this container is money. This container could be plumbing services. Now, when you go and do a transaction with someone, you are not at all looking at the money. What you're looking at is the power. Now, we assign a value to the power. How much is the power in the form of the container of the couch? Because the couch was created by someone else to sell. So now that energy was, or that power was converted over into a possession. So a kind of container could be in a possession. Another kind of container could be in, mm, oh, this is gonna be so fucking gorgeous. Let's do this. So now we're gonna look at types of containers. Types of containers. Now, this is where you can be smart or stupid. Types of containers is gonna be possessions. Other types of containers are going to be in ideas. Other types are going to be in money. And then other types of containers are going to be in services. There you go. Those are your four types of containers. Now, these containers can be stupid or smart containers. And we're going to cover this. The possessions don't hold the power. So the possession depreciates. It loses its actual energy. It's a shit container because it does not hold, retain value. Retain value equals it can't hold power. D Hello, people. There you go. Possessions are a poor container because they don't retain value. They don't hold power. So the moment you put power into a possession, you've actually given away your power and you've lost it and you actually don't have anything to represent it. Think about it. Now, if you have the ability to renew your power, which you do, everyone has renewable resources, then you can just go get another couch. But you have to be conscious and aware of how power works, what containers hold power, and the depreciated value. The couch is only going to have value to you, which means when you purchase something like a possession, first of all, Make sure it is coming from your renewable, infinite resource supply and not a limited resource because it doesn't hold power. The next thing to look at is your ideas. Ideas are fucking powerful containers. Ideas are the most powerful. Ideas are amazing. Ideas are powerful containers. They are the strongest. Because an idea, <clears throat> well, let, let, let's use some examples of some ideas that are powerful containers. The internet. That's a really fucking powerful tool. The internet. Society. That is a really fucking powerful. Corporations are really fucking powerful. Here you go. Here you go. Ready? <clears throat> Disney. Disney is a really fucking powerful idea. Oh, I love this one. McDonald's. 
I think McDonald's is the biggest, bestest idea ever. Like, it, it's fucking insane. He had an idea and he took burgers and turned it into real estate and then strategically positions himself all over the fucking world. And now everyone is eating shitty ass low quality burgers because he had an idea. It's fucking genius. It's fucking genius. Everyone's going, oh, Disney's in control of the world. That's a lie. McDonald's is. McDonald's controls the world, people. All right, here's another one. Apple. You see what? Oh, oh, this is one of my favorites. AT&T. AT&T is really old. Kodak. Yeah, did you notice that most of these people are located on the New York Stock Exchange? Oh, why do you think that is? There you go. Because ideas are power. You know where ideas come from? Ready for this one. This is where ideas come from. This, this is, ideas come from these four fucking subjects that create. By the way, these are the ones not taught in school. This is why. It comes from your brain and knowledge. We're going to call this super knowledge or super education. Because these four topics is really, and I'm going to clarify here that it's, it's power knowledge and it's rich man economics. Okay, that's really, because there's shit man economics, which isn't going to make you a dime. And then there's, or I'm sorry, there's poor man economics, which isn't going to make you a dime. And then there's rich man economics. This is rich man economics. And this is what makes you money. So this is ideas. Ideas are really fucking powerful containers. Money. Money is a shit container. Money is a mediocre container. It's mediocre. Because, first of all, no one can agree on money right now. Because we have, oh, what a fucking nightmare money is. Money isn't real. It's an idea that other people put a value on because other it's a value assigned by not you. Did you read that? Which means you don't have the power or the control because you're not the one assigning the value to it. The government is. That's why the U.S. dollar fluctuates in value. Services. Services are only equal to your skills, your skill level. They take time, but they are worth it. And the skill level can contribute to your idea. So I would say that these are better than money, but not by much. So if I were to put value <laughs> on these containers, I would say I would give this a lowest, lowest value. Let's, let's sort this out the best to least. There you go. There you go. There you are. There you are. So when you say you only have money, when you say you don't have money and that's all you're thinking about, you are not looking at your ideas or your services. Now, ideas and services require this kind of education, which is not what you're getting in schools not what you're getting anywhere. This is what matters. There's another one in here that I really need to add to it because it's vital. So when people say money is energy, no, it's not. They're idiots. Money is a container for energy. That is, that's value is determined exclusively by not you. When you are looking at 
how to transfer power and how to gain wealth through the transference and the exchange of your power. This is economics. Poor man economics teaches you scarcity with a scarcity mindset about how to cultivate and prevent scarcity. And that's the problem. 100% of all mental illnesses come from scarcity of something. Usually a scarcity of choice and power. Rich man economics teaches you how to trade and exchange power via quality containers. So you can either study scarcity, which is all the economics you're going to quite literally learn in the world for the most part, which is what I call poor man economics. Or you can study and learn about how to trade and exchange power via quality containers. And that is what I call rich man economics. And that is the difference. That is why people will go and get master's degrees in economics and then walk away impoverished is because all they have learned is scarcity mindset. If you want to study economics, you must study good psychology. I'm going to tell you right now, just like economics, the psychology that they're teaching is also garbage because they do not understand that power is actually quality education. So there's a whole lot of poor, dumb people teaching a whole lot of more poor, dumb people bad education because they don't know what good education is because they're poor and dumb. And becoming aware of the two types of education, being able to selectively go, oh, I want to make sure this is good quality education. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you are not taught at all how to have good quality or determine good quality education. The bottom line, there's good quality education and there is poor quality. We're just going to call it shit quality education. I like to call it shit education for short. Shit education. And when you start to become aware of these two types of education, you start to realize that good education is power and shit education has no value. This is vital. This is vital. Good quality education is highly powerful. And I'm going to say it again. It is this because good quality education gives you the power to create creativity, create, see how that works. Whereas poor quality shit education Can you create? If you can't create, then you have no power. Power is creation. I swear there's a religion in there somewhere. There you have it. When you study a subject, it is really vital that you are studying this part of the education and not this part of the education. Because this part of the education does take two, four, six, eight years to accomplish and it eliminates this part of the concept. So you don't understand it. Whereas this part of the subject takes two months to two years max to study and you're done. Every subject has this to it. You figure that out. You don't have to. I have it figured out for you. I can like, I'll, I'll probably do a video to break it all down for you. You figure this out. You learn this. Let me put it to you this way. You learn that and you really never again have to study this bullshit. 
because this is bad education. And this is it right here. This is bad education. Or what I like to call shit education. And then this up here is good education. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't want to wait, and if you want to jump right into finance and poor man economic, I'm sorry, rich man economics, rich dad, poor dad, absolutely. He's got it figured out. He has got it fucking figured out. His formula is identical to my formula. I applied it to psychology and mental health. He applied it to business and finance. It's the exact same fucking formula. Mind blowing. I'm like, oh my God, he quotes me. I'm like, oh dude, you quote me. Like it's extraordinary. So here you have it. I, I really understanding power like it, it's I, I cannot explain to you enough how much it ties into literally every fucking subject in existence it is all about power and understanding really the psychology of power everything that takes place with power and how it interacts but if you are start studying a scarcity based economic system then you're going to think like you have scarcity mindset and scarcity mindset is poor man mindset. Like, like I, it blows my mind. It still blows my mind. I did that. I, I got into it and I looked right at it and I went the very first course across the board scarcity. And I'm like, economics is the study of scarcity. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's why it's all fucked up. It's not the study of scarcity. It's the study of how to identify your power and how to use it appropriately and strategically with mathematical problem solving and application and logic. That is economics. Poor man, or I'm sorry, rich man economics. That's what entrepreneurs and billionaires have figured out. Poor men are studying scarcity economics and nurturing their scarcity mindset. And they have fallen into the psychological trap because economics and psychology are the same thing. You're studying a mindset when you study economics. Be careful which ones you choose. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.